Let's jump right into this so it's quick and easy for y'all. This is one of my favorite interchange runs that I prefer to attempt as a scav. It's mostly in the parking garage, quick and easy to guarantee survival. You can always do a PMC run if you get the right spawn, but I find this area is usually not looted 90% of the time, so PMC isn't my preference. I don't show it in the video, but I spawned inside Idea, went out the back, and used the power building as a landmark to find my way. You can enter in between the two ramps right in front of power or any of the two north entrances. As a scav, you will always have both the railway and Emercon checkpoint extracts, but railway has some excellent stashes you can hit along the way, so that's the one I take every time. The entrance I just walked through here with the green arrows is the one between the two ramps that I have circled in red on the map. This raid is a special one. I end up making over 600,000 in rubles in less than 20 minutes without finding any true high tier loot items. It's proof that you can make excellent profit with a little time learning the value of Tarkov's most obscure items that are usually left behind by others. This tent I like to call medical tent because of the med bags that sometimes spawn. Nothing in here now, but med bags yield ophthalmoscopes and other various high tier meds to use on PMC raids or just for selling. One of the features of this run is coming across weapons to modify and use as my PMC. I always choose a map to scav run based upon what I may need, and this one delivers on many fronts. I recommend picking a wall and following it all the way around in a loop and doubling back towards the interior. Once you're familiar with the route path, you can do this in reverse order or any fashion you see fit, but I'd recommend following this video step by step the first time so you don't get lost down here. There are weapon boxes, ammo boxes, duffel bag spawns, and they're all hidden around the shipping containers, the sandbag bunkers, vehicles on top of pallets, metal tables, and even loose loot on the ground. Leave no stone unturned. Even I continue to look in every nook and cranny since the loot containers are no longer static. Every raid is different for loot container spawns, so you'll see me looking at spots where there's seemingly nothing, but I may have seen something there before or I'm just checking because it seems like a likely spot a container may be. I made sure to keep the edits to a minimum for the beginner crowd. I only jump cut about two or three times, so this video should be simple and easy to follow and you won't lose track of where I am. Interchange has a notoriously short scav raid timer. Overall, I had about 20 minutes left in raid when I spawned in. If you're a new player, I'll explain why I'm picking up certain loot. If you're a veteran, keep watching. I think you'll be surprised about what has value on the flea market. I decided against this visor and MPX stock because I know they're not too valuable and I have the luxury of being picky since I'm at the beginning of my run. If you don't start out with a backpack, try and look for a dead player or scav on your way down here with one. You're going to need it. So far, I've gathered some bolts, a power bank, and some AP ammo. Bolts are selling for a bit more than nuts, but they both are items I always pick up because they're one slot, and they always sell for about 15,000 rubles or more. Power banks are even more profitable as a one slot, and I shoot for about 10,000 rubles per slot. Obviously, when I say slot, I mean the little Tetris squares that make up your inventory. This next part of the garage, I usually just run through pretty quickly because it connects us to the main loot area. If you stick to the left, you'll come across a weapon box or two, and there are a few entrances that lead to the garages from the upper levels. You'll see as I keep an eye on those for enemy combatants. As I run through here, I grab the jailbreak weapon part because I wasn't sure if it was valuable at this point in the wipe. Turns out it isn't, so you can leave those behind. The AP ammo I'll hang on to for my PMC raids and add it to my ongoing collection of hard to find and pricey end game munitions. I grabbed a couple flashbangs because why not? I'm also hanging on to at least one stack of my shotgun shells I spawned with in case I run into trouble. I'll drop the flashbangs and the ammo as I go when I find more valuable items and run out of space. A weapon box can spawn on top of this container, but don't trouble yourself jumping up if you can't see it from the ground. That means it didn't spawn. Nothing in there, and I jump down to find some AI scabs patrolling around. There are a ton of different weapon box spawns in this connecting area. I'll find two of them on the way in and another few as I come out. I picked up the ear helmet armor because I again thought it might be worth, but I know they're trash. Not sure why I did that and I dropped them in a few minutes anyway. The gas mask is a no-brainer because it sells for a good amount on the flea market and can be equipped so it won't take up space in my bag. This next little area is similar to the one at the start. The entrance marked with the green arrows is one of the two north entrances I noted earlier. 
I see another AI scav running around, and I always quickly assess everyone down here. You can never be too sure in Tarkov. This next 30 seconds is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. Despite a lack of containers on this right side I'm traveling down, I'm still checking all those likely areas where a container could spawn. In this case, it just really doesn't yield any results. I checked the metal table real quick. Looks like I missed a wooden crate here, but I don't like what they have to offer anyway. I checked the trailer bed real quick. Sometimes loose items and containers can spawn on top. I skipped that weapon barrel because I didn't recognize it and it's for a shotgun, so it's not worth it. The Scorpius pistol grip sells for a decent one slot and the Saiga 9 weapon is trash, but I take it anyway. The thinking there is it doesn't take up any room in my bag and I may not come across another weapon to carry in my secondary slot. In this tent, I'm gonna scan on the ground very, very carefully. You can see I looked at one of those like inanimate objects on the ground. It looks like something, but it's nothing. And of course there was absolutely nothing in the tent, but it's good to look at the ground very carefully for those loose loot items. Here is some M882 ammo, and that's extremely cheap and can be bought at level one, not worth the pickup at all. In all honesty, I'll skip this section of the garage 50% of the time. I don't find too many container spawns on a regular basis, but I wanted to include it as an option. I'll check the center with the tables real quick and then the truck bed before heading back the way I came. You'll see I'm pointing out the two weapon boxes I already checked. All right, now on to the more exciting areas. There's another weapon box here with a Lantac Dragon muzzle break that I know isn't worth, but I'm starting to feel like I might not get much else this raid, so I grab it anyway. The PK-06 reflex sight can be bought at level one, so it's not worth anything. Another container can spawn here. Nothing right now though. Ah yes, my sworn enemy, barbed wire. Making my way back toward the center, there are three tents that almost always spawn weapon boxes. And that was a dust cover I grabbed and some iron sights that I didn't grab. The dust cover I thought was something else, and I drop it immediately. Finally, back on track with something of value. The hammer sight will sell for over 40k, and the SRD suppressor is almost 70k. Don't forget to check on top of the tables and on the ground in these tents. Now this weapon barrel here is easily recognizable because it's particularly short and it says AR-15 on it. But these sell for a decent amount on the flea market because players like to use them to achieve better ergonomics with their meta M4 builds. I picked up the weapon stock because it's a newer item to the game. I didn't know what it was. Turns out it's not worth anything. The last and third tent, I find some aqua peps on the ground, which is an easy 15K if you sell to a therapist. an LSHZ helmet, and that's a no-brainer because I can equip it onto my head and sells for about 30K. I'm looking over this way to see if I can spot a container and save the trouble of running over there. 
If your bags are full, this is one of the two exits out of the front of the mall where you can exit. Not quite yet though, the best is yet to come. Now check this little nook behind this tent that you can access and there's two sides of it. Just be sure to check around the other way. Sometimes things spawn on the chair and the table here. Now moving on to the next area, you can see it's marked by this fence. Enter inside and stick to the left wall for some consistent weapon box spawns. Nice, a 556 variant of the SCAR. I also picked up a flashlight slash laser tactical device that I'll throw onto the SCAR rails to make more space in my bags. I think I do that later. Another one of those short AR barrels and some 762 by 54 BS ammo, which is the best ammo for that caliber. Definitely a must grab. The foregrip, I add to my scar immediately. It's not worth since it can be bought from traders for very cheap, but might as well throw it on my weapon for some extra profit. In hindsight, I probably should have dropped the shotgun and put the Saiga 9 in the place of that. The thinking there is the shotgun is low on durability and it's not gonna sell as well. And the Saiga 9 is brand new. Another shorty AR barrel. That's three total for this raid. Once I get to the back, I dart across to the other side and follow the opposite wall back to the fence. This weapon box almost always spawns up here. I picked up the longer AR barrel just to fill slots, but it's not worth for three slots. Then I found this unique skull handguard worth about 25k. I took the mag just because, I don't even know why. Check the tables closer to this side and then head out, but not before you check the truck bed. A weapon box can spawn right in here as you pull down the tailgate. Now we have a decision to make. Do I head to the higher traffic area over by the hole in the floor or take what I have and leave out the front? In this case, I decide not to risk it for the biscuit. There's really not a whole lot over there and I recommend you just leave to avoid a quick trip back to the lobby. Plus, there's a few more containers that can spawn. I equip the AOTech holographic sight to my SCAR, which is an easy 40K. The weapon parts are just barely 10K rubles per slot, but I take those anyway. The shorty AK I could have swapped for the Saiga, but they're both around the same price, so it didn't really matter. Another great example of just how many perfectly intact firearms you could find on this run. Now the MP9 is a good find and will sell for around 35k. Pro tip, if you remove the magazine and fold it, it'll take up only two slots instead of four like you see here. Now this is the closest thing I find to an actual high tier loot item. It's no lead X, but these red stock tubes sell for around 100k. They have a boost to recoil and ergo that the best players use to give their ARs that extra edge in firefights. Since it's a best in slot item, it'll sell for a pretty penny. Exiting the garage is really simple. Leave out the front and follow the fenced median with all the trees. This will provide excellent cover across the open area. I do my best to run through the openings of the guardrails to avoid using extra stamina. You can kind of do this wiggle move thing, something I may teach in later videos, but there are many ways in which you can just attempt to make sure that running across these open areas, you use your biggest burst of stamina as you're going across the areas with little cover. Although I'm getting close to extract, don't touch that dial just yet. We still have to find the four hidden stashes that are back here along the way. Our first of four hidden stashes is right here. It's a Jaeger stash. Jaeger stashes are identified by a flat pile of leaves that hide a hidden trap door. It's not here right now, but this is the exact location it will spawn. Use the rail tracks as a guide and stay on the right side as you pass by these big puddles. A 
Avoid the first pile of rubble. The one we want is the larger pile and it has a buried barrel stash that spawns right where I'm looking. Quickly cross the tracks and head diagonally to the stone wall with a clump of bushes. This Jaeger stash did spawn in, that's what they look like if you didn't know, and I take the chocolate bar obviously, it's a one slot item and it sells for a lot during mid wipe. Players use these to craft sugar in their hideout kitchen, which they turn around to make into moonshine in their booze generators. Moonshine hands sell for hundreds of thousands on the flea and is used for other various trades. Now follow the wall to the next pile of rubble and you'll find our last stash, a buried barrel. Nothing in there, but it's nice that we had at least two of them spawn. Your extraction is one quick sprint towards the train cars. Don't go anywhere just yet. I still need to show you my total from this raid once I get out. After unloading my loot, I utilized the quick sell option to get rid of the junk I'll sell to the traders anyway. The total for that is 40k. Now remember this number because we're going to subtract my current total of 3,382,000. Quick flea market lesson. You can select multiple items of the same kind like the three shorty M4 barrels here. I always type in my price to undercut just slightly so my items sell instantly. And then I like to refresh the market to double check. I sold a few items to the traders. At this point, my total is a little higher, but if we do the math correctly, I netted nearly 611,000 rubles on virtually just junk. I didn't even sell the scar, I kept it to use on my PMC, so it would be even more than that. If you like this video, you'll love my Lighthouse Loot Run video. It's a similar run that keeps you out of the fighting and the rubles in your stash. Until next time.